Hey guys, welcome to the Elk Shape YouTube channel, Dan Staten. I wanted to go over some Sika gear pieces for elk hunting, really for hunting out west. I get a lot of questions, a lot of messages to do a video. We've done them in the past, but I wanted to really just do a quick and dirty video on what I actually wear while elk hunting, antelope hunting, mule deer hunting, and kind of talk about the different pieces because honestly, they have so many options and get, it gets very confusing. So I'm gonna like show you and try some of this stuff on so you can see it and maybe help you make some buying decisions. Uh, we're not covering First Light. I'm not covering Kuyu. I, I don't have any experience with those brands. I've been using Sika Gear since about 2007. I have a relationship with one of the founders, the Jonathan Hart. Actually, I filmed him kill his first whitetail ever in Kansas back when I used to be a, a videographer. And uh, so I know him. I've always supported him. I am not sponsored by Sika Gear. I have no contract, no obligations, nothing. But I really respect the brand and as far as the gear. And then John uh, Barklow, one of their main engineer designers for Out West pieces, I think there's no one better. And so he's a good friend of mine. And so I continue to support them because they're a great brand. They make the stuff that works and it's just undeniable. Let's go through the gear. Let's show you, let's start with the pants. I know base layers is where most people would start. I would just say, hey, they have core lightweight hoodie and core bottoms that are awesome. And then they have just like, I don't know if they still make it, but some, they have some Merino base layers that are awesome. I'll show you. This is stuff that's several years old and I still rock it. So this is like a Merino wool type layer, bottom and top. And this is really breathable. You'll see me wearing this. I've killed a lot of animals in this and you'll see me with a grip and grin just wearing this shirt because it breathes well, even when it's hot. I love the way it feels. And here is core lightweight. Here's the bottoms. And so there you have that. Now let's go over pants. Now the pants, man, I'm gonna tell you right now. So like for early, early season antelope, the Ascent pant is pretty dope. Although it does not come with knee pads and it's very light material, very stretchy. They say the four way stretch, this is them. Fits really good in the waist. I have a very slim waist and very movable. So I feel like I can be a ninja in these pants. They don't have the built-in knee pads. That's the one bummer about this. So this is the Ascent pant. This is probably like one of my favorite early season. Although if you're gonna be stalking and crawling on your knees, I don't know. I don't know if this is your pant. Conversely, the Apex pant does come with built-in built knee pads. Probably one of my favorites. This would probably be my go-to and even in for elk, for elk season. It's got these built-in knee pads, which I feel like are super important, whether you're crouched down, kneeling, glassing, ranging, crawling, big pockets. Now these are kind of tight where you, a tighter pocket, they're not as loose. And both have a little pocket inside hard to show that but you have this little pocket here and then you on the outside pocket that's what you got with these um, no butt pockets probably my favorite elk hunting pant for early season let me show you the mountain pant it's a little bit different so this is the mountain pant uh, you can get it in subalpine if that's what you're into. I, I think solids are awesome colors to wear while hunting. I think more people should get solids. So a little bit heavier pant, a little heavier duty, really stretchy and flexy, if that's a word. Good fit in the waist. I don't tuck my uh, shirt in usually. Okay. So you have the side and the top with buttons. knee pads zip front pockets great option for elk hunting for mule deer hunting so the mountain pant super super legit if you said well what's the differences between the mountain pant and the apex pant it's pockets for sure zip front pockets 
a side zip, comes with the knee pads, super flexy stretchy, fits good, has a butt pocket on the right side. So these pants get used a ton. And then there's the Timberline. You'll see it comes with some booty Gore-Tex on the backside. That's pitch, I didn't crap my pants. But uh, I wore these, I think I killed my bear with these on. You don't have to run suspenders. Maybe you need suspenders. A little bit more baggy fit. Zip pockets, huge. Side pockets, way bigger. It seems like just more Gore-Tex over the knee pads and the butt, like we said. And that's really the only difference for the most part. So very similar to the mountain pant. If I had to choose between the two, I would probably go with the mountain pant, quite honestly. But this is a good one for a little bit later season, especially if it's wetter conditions. I like having the Gore-Tex over the knees and the booty. So that is the mountain pant. Let's do one more. I think they still make it. It's the Traverse pant. Super light, no knee pads. Okay, so this is the Traverse pant. Different pocket style in the front, no zip. Side zip on the side. No pocket inside of a pocket. Pocket on the right, butt cheek. This is them. Now let's go over top layers and the whole layering system idea behind Sika is that it's a system. Uh, I run pretty cold, so mountain mornings, I'm pretty layered up. But a lot of places I hunt, it gets real warm real quick. You gotta be able to peel layers. So let's kind of go over layering systems. Let's start with the core lightweight hoodie. Um, I have like three of these because I like to change shirts every couple days if I'm hunting near my truck or spike camp. But this is the ultimate first layer in my opinion, because even this, when it's hot, I can still manage this on. Core lightweight hoodie, we give these out at elk shape camps. It's one of my favorite piece from Sika for the top layer. Side pocket, built-in mask. If you want to stock, although I will say for archers especially, Make sure you practice with that anchor changing slightly. Just make sure you're still consistent. I can shoot like this all day, every day. Uh, you just something that you need to practice. So a core lightweight hoodie and then a Kelvin light vest. I generally do this under here and then make sure that you put your bino harness on the right layer. So I would probably put my bino harness here because I'm gonna be here eventually but if I'm hiking in the mornings or if I'm, gl if I'm glassing from a stationary spot, I would have my glass on the outside of these. From there, you can go with the Apex hoodie. This has like a kangaroo pouch. Uh, it also has a face mask. And it's just, it's a little bit of a different fit. It's a little longer. It's got built-in elbow pads. You can take those out if you want. I didn't. So you could run this system right here. I love the kangaroo pouch. It's got a little slot so you can keep things separate and then it's got a main pouch. So side, side, and then main pouch in the kangaroo pouch. Elbow pads, totally awesome for out west. Let me show you the heavyweight hoodie, which is also another good option. I don't think I would buy both. So this is a heavyweight hoodie. I would wear it over my lightweight hoodie or lightweight hoodie Kelvin vest. I'm about to show you. You can do one of those deals if you're into it. And you see it zips up so there's no need for a face mask. Again, practice shooting archery if you need to. Wear this with the hood up if you're making a stock. And I'm gonna give you one more option. Maybe you just wanna run the core lightweight hoodie, the Kelvin light, and a mountain jacket. Not very thick. This 
Sitka runs very true to size, uh, if not slightly on the small side. So sometimes I feel like I need larges, but predominantly a medium kind of guy for a medium build. You'll need to, this is just, this is gonna work well as a layering system. So core lightweight hoodie, Kelvin light vest, mountain jacket. Conversely, if I'm in somewhere, or maybe it's later September, early October elk hunts, I might wear this and a puffy on top. Let me go over two puffy options. This is the Calvin Down WS hoodie. This goes everywhere. It's always in my pack in case I'm waiting out a cold front. Very warm. I'll sleep in it because I sleep cold, even with a 10 degree bag. But this is the ultimate, most comfortable. This is a must. Get this hoodie. Especially if you run cold like I do. This is, it compresses down super small, fits in any backpack, and you always can stay warm, especially. And another thing to think about, let's say you're hiking in and you get real sweaty. Uh, you can stop to glass, put this on, and you should dry out. Uh, conversely, if you're real sweaty, and or maybe even a little bit damp or wet you can put this on as you're moving around um, setting up camp and things and if you move around with this on it should dry out that base layer that is definitely something that happens a lot this is the high country hoodie it's a lot lighter it's not as warm but it's a really good final layer you can see i have it in a solid you can get it in whatever color you want it fits awesome, it's super packable, and it works really well for evening glass sessions, morning glass sessions. You can wear it as, at camp, at your spike camp, baby camp, or you can wear it to bed, and it, it fits awesome, super true to size, very lightweight. I'm gonna go over one more uh, base layer option. Super lightweight, not a hoodie. So if hoodies just aren't your thing, get this instead of the core lightweight hoodie. I'll wear this as my first layer. And it's really breathable. Double pockets on the chest. Great stretchy material. I don't know if it's Cordura or if it's Merino or Poly, but I'll try to tell you guys. So this is this says 100% nylon. This is the Ascent shirt. Doesn't come with the hoodie. It's a great base layer option. Now, let me go over my favorite piece from Sitka that came out last year, Kelvin Active Hoodie. It's mainly for archers. I'll show you why. But this can go over your core lightweight hoodie. Or over a t-shirt. And it's kind of like a uh, almost long, it's, I don't know what you'd call this. Uh, a shooty. I'm not sure. It's a shirt and a hoodie kind of combined. Uh, you ever seen the coach of the Patriots? What's his name? He, he always cuts off his hoodies. Maybe that's where they got the idea, but man, does it work great. Uh, I shot my bear. I think I shot my bear this year wearing this top layer. Works really great. Hoodie up, hoodie down. Uh, doesn't have a built-in face mask. Zip. Get this, this is awesome for all bow hunters. Half sleeve, hoodie. Let's go over some rain gear options. Stormfront Gators. I haven't worn these yet. I've used theirs in the past, but this is definitely something you're gonna wear when it's really wet outside and you wanna keep your boots as dry as possible. Thunderhead jacket and pant. Don't know if they still make these. Came out a couple years ago, kind of when uh, their, their sub Alpine launched. So this Thunderhead jacket is loud and it's not like 100% waterproof, but it's kind of damp proof. So if the conditions are just damp, maybe the underbrush is wet, this would be a good option. It does keep you warm. Same with the pants. They fit very well. They can go over like say you had your apex pants on, you could probably keep those on and just put this over the top. It's got the built-in belt. 
and it fits really well. I don't feel like I'm drowning, but it is heavier. So that's the Thunderhead. I have the Cloudburst pants and the Stormfront jacket. Those are usually are what are in my pack. If I can get a look at the weather and if I think I might be battling some, some wet conditions, um, I'll wear those. Now, if I don't know the weather conditions, I'll probably just pack uh, just a rain jacket. And for the pants, I'll have gaiters. And that's really it. So let me show you that. So this is the Cloudburst pants. Again, I probably wouldn't pack these unless I knew I was hunting in conditions that were gonna be wet for sure. The nice thing about these is you can take them on and off without taking your boots off. So in here, you got a pocket, a pocket, a smaller pocket, a smaller pocket. And then on the side here, you can zip. So you can breathe if you need to breathe, or if you wanna keep your pants on and just get these over the top of your boots without taking your boots off, that works. Stormfront. This is your Stormfront jacket from Sika Gear. It also packs up very nicely. Pocket. Pocket. Inside pocket. So this one smells like campfire because usually when I'm wearing it, I'm got a camp or I got a fire going and I'm just trying to stay warm. You have pit zips for breathability. Pit zips here. Again, Stormfront jacket, Cloudburst pants. It's a little different probably than most people. They'd get the, the matching set, but man, I've got to try it all. And so I kind of pretty much whittle it down. All right, I know I didn't cover everything, but let's go ahead and recap kind of like my favorite pick. So core lightweight bottom and top. Get the core lightweight hoodie, get the core lightweight bottom. Layering system is great. If it's gonna be a hot day, don't wear the bottoms. Uh, from there, probably get the Kelvin Light vest. It just, it's just a good layering system tool. From there, you could pick the heavy, or the heavy hoodie, or the Apex hoodie. I'm gonna go with the Apex hoodie because it's super, it's super handy with all the different places to put stuff, and it's got the elbow pads for stocking. Now for pants, man, that's a tough call. I'm gonna go with probably. I'll say it's a toss up between the mountain pant and the apex pant. Uh, the apex pant is probably ideal for early, early stocking on your knees, stuff like that. But the mountain pant to me fits the best. And then in the later season, probably the, the Timberline. So uh, that's a tough call. The Ascent pants are probably awesome. They just don't have knee pads. Uh, at least the ones I have don't. And so uh, they fit good, but man, it's just kind of one of those things where it'd probably be just for early, early season. So. Haven't covered late season stuff. I'm not gonna do that in this video. This is mainly just out west, early season to mid season to maybe the start of late season. This is what I run. Hope this helps with your shopping experience and kind of see what works for me. And hopefully you can find out what works for you. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.